Welcome to Jackson Community Church. Um, I think everybody knows at this point, this is a hybrid service. So we have a hearty few souls here in the sanctuary who uh, braved the cold, sub-zero weather during the night, certainly in single digits, low single digits this morning. But this is the clear day before the snowstorm hits us. So we're uh, grateful for those who could gather here in person. And we are equally grateful that we have Zoom so people can remain safe at home where they need to be, or they can join us from a distance. All of these things are cherished. And I, I believe also folks in Zoom now know that we have a television screen up in the sanctuary, which is a new departure for us. We've been doing this just through Christmas, and it's a welcome addition because we can see your faces um, here in the sanctuary. So it feels like there's more of us. Yeah, you guys, I think when, when the sanctuary screen is sometimes up, you can see a few of the folks sitting here, but many people sit so far back that they're not visible through the camera. Uh, but I assure you, there are people here besides Alan and myself, and the and the soul brave, one or two brave souls that are sitting in the couple first few pews. Um, if you're here, we are going to ask that you continue to remain masked at all times because it's a privilege to be able to gather, and we know it's getting dodgier and dodgier to be able to do that. But we want to keep trying, so let's keep each other safe and remain distant and masked for each other's sake. A couple of announcements for the life of the church that I am aware of. The biggest one is that our annual meeting is this Wednesday at 7 p.m. It will be on Zoom only. And there are printed copies of the annual report in the front of the church. So anybody that wants to grab a printed copy may do so. We have emailed, uh, Joanne tried to email out to everybody a PDF. And I also sent an email with a link to the PDF so that you can download it and you can have it digitally as well. Um, we will do our best to try to screen share, but it'll be screen shares of smaller documents, not like the graphics we do for this. So uh, it, it would be best if you're able to follow along with a hard copy or a PDF that you can see on a screen if you're able to. And um, just a reminder, all people are welcome in the meeting. Anybody can speak or ask a question when it's appropriate. We do uh, votes are for those who have officially joined the church. Uh, that's the main difference between joining and not joining. Your, your membership permits, whatever the status of your membership, it permits you to um, vote. And mostly we're voting on a budget and just letting you know about a couple of, we received a grant for historic preservation for the exterior of the building. So we'll just go over a few of those items. It's, there's nothing particularly exciting or controversial happening at this meeting this year. Also, for those who are interested in membership, please be in contact directly with me. I'm aware of a few people and we're starting to schedule the meeting to your, it's your inquiry meeting. So if you have any questions before you join, if there's something that you wanna ask or that you need to know, we wanna make sure we answer your questions. And we do have, I think, four people right now that are planning to to join us. And so the actual welcoming of members will be in early February. So we'll plan the class towards the end of January and invite anybody who wishes. And that class, that, that inquiry class is, or inquiry gathering is over Zoom. And we will we'll have at least one deacon or one church leader with us as well, besides myself to help answer questions. Those are my announcements for the life of the church. Are there any other announcements that I missed that anybody's aware of? If so, please raise your hand if you're in the congregation or unmute if you're in Zoom. 
All right, looks like we're good to start. Then let us cherish Alan's centering music. Please put your feet firmly on the floor. Relax, open your hands, open your hearts. Hear the word and receive the gifts of this day. Thank you, Alan. I'm just going to say how much I appreciate Alan as a colleague and as a minister of music here in our church. This is Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, so part of our reflection today will include words from Martin Luther King and what justice, what the work of caring for beloved community looks like in our part of the world. We start today's service with the words of a child from New Hampshire. Her name is Ariana Metzger, and she won the Lionel Washington Johnson Award from the New Hampshire Martin Luther King Coalition. And so we have turned it into a call to worship, but these are the words of a sixth grader in response to a poetry prompt and challenge from that coalition. Please join me in the call to worship, which you'll find either on your screen if you're in Zoom or in your bulletin. Sometimes you wonder why people love. Sometimes you pray to the heavens above. Life is confusing and unfair. Life moves faster than you can comprehend. Love lifts you off the ground. Love squeezes your heart. Find yourself, and slowly you rise to the glorious sun. Love yourself and flow forward. The stars your map. Go to yourself, waves on the beach, a steady lap. I turn us now to the work the music of our choir. This was recorded last year. It's called I Dream a World. Oh, 
several readings this morning and the first is actually a prayer which will be led by ginger the words will be on your screen if you are in zoom it's a prayer that was offered by dr martin luther king Good morning oh god we thank you for the fact that you have inspired men and women in all nations and in all cultures we call you different names some call you allah some call you elohim some call you jehovah some call you Brahma, some call you the unmoved mover. But we know that these are all names for one and the same God. Grant that we follow you and become so committed to your way and your kingdom that we will be able to establish in all our lives and in this world a brother and sisterhood. That we will be able to establish here a kingdom of understanding where men and women will live together as brothers and sisters and respect the dignity and the worth of every human being. In the name and spirit of Jesus, amen. Amen. So now is the time in our service when we invite your prayers, your prayers first of concern, and then any prayers you may have of celebration that you wish to raise up out loud. Uh, let us begin first in Zoom. If there's anyone in Zoom who has a prayer of concern that you wish to share, please go ahead and unmute and speak right up. Go ahead, Judy. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, give prayers. Bill's having some eye surgery on Wednesday. Eye surgery on Wednesday locally? Yes. Okay. Uh, prayers for vision, for sight, for the skill of Bill's caregivers and surgeon, and that all will be well, and that what needs to be stabilized will be stabilized, and we will have the outcomes that you hope for. Other prayers in Zoom of concern. Then I ask for any prayers that may want to be lifted up here in the congregation, in the church. Um, raise your hand if you do have such a prayer of concern so that we can bring the microphone to you. Okay, quiet in the church. 
did I miss anybody in Zoom? All right, so I'm going to lift up a couple of prayers. Uh, we are running a cold weather shelter this weekend. So let us hold in our attention and in our thoughts and prayers, those who are living unsheltered in the Bronx because of a fire that ripped through the residences of many people and um, several people are in house now and some lost their lives. But even here in the Valley, for those that came in out of the cold to the shelter, um, this is both concern and gratitude that someone prompted the idea and many volunteers have come forward and we've been able to make this happen. It is a learning curve, but the first attempt has been made at helping people in this way. Uh, but the fact that people need that assistance remains something that we should also pay attention to. Let me name those that we pray for every week as part of our communal prayers. Scamp, Huntley, Mary, the grandchild of Sasha and Sasha, Richard, Alice and John, Jan and Barry, Anne, Arden and Ray. We hold all of these our brothers and our sisters, those we know and those we have never met who need your love and your attention, O oh holy God. We lift up their names, we lift up their identities, we lift up the places in the world that are burning, that are hurt, for your healing, for your peace building, peacemaking, for your binding up and bringing together your children and your world. We ask now for any expressions of gratitude, celebration, or joy that you might wish to share. And this time we'll start in the congregation. And Sue's got one, so she's going to talk into the microphone. Good morning. I would like to celebrate the life of my dear sweet husband, who left us six years ago. Please smile and say hi to Jim, because he's a sweetheart. Is today the anniversary of that event, Sue? Yeah. Um, we recognize the, the life of Sue's husband, Jim, who died six years ago. We recognize the life of Steve Barish, who died four years ago this week. We recognize significant contributions and the joy that we have had in loving people that have gone ahead of us. So many of us have people in our lives that have changed us, transformed us, and then crossed a threshold which we cannot yet follow, but we have the promise that someday we shall. And yet we miss them here. We celebrate their lives. And we probably cry a little bit too because crying is how we love them. Um, but we're grateful that they have been among us and we're grateful for anniversaries. Uh, Jeanette and Steve would have had a wedding anniversary yesterday. And uh, for the milestones that we have with those that we love while they're alive and the place it creates in our calendars even when they can't be with us anymore. So it's another reason to remember them and celebrate them. Other prayers of celebration here in the sanctuary. Meg has one, so we're going to bring the microphone to Meg. I want to acknowledge that it's very cold outside, but the good side of that is that the beautiful ice sculptures that were created last week that sit in front of the Wentworth on their front porch. Almost every year we have a warm spell and they melt as they're being built. And today you can see them glistening in the sunshine. And I thought, well, that's a really good reason to be so cold outside. We can go and enjoy those. <laughs> so if you're out and about, go enjoy the wonderful ice sculptures in front of the Wentworth because they're still up and they are quite spectacular. Other prayers of celebration here in the church. 
than in Zoom. Are there any prayers of gratitude, joy, celebration? If so, please go ahead and unmute and share with us. Uh, I'm happy that my niece and her roommate are having a great time uh, in uh, Ireland. And we know that they are safe because we have talked to them on the phone. So we're very happy and, and pleased that they're enjoying this really cool adventure. So gratitude and pleasure for those who have had the chance to go on journeys in spite of the challenges that are posed with such plans. Anybody else in Zoom who wishes to share with us? Well, let me just say again, um, acknowledgement in particular for the um, teams that helped create a plan to respond to the extreme cold and have worked different shifts or made contributions. We have our, our own wonderful Sue who makes great soup, who brought those for the first shift um, to the volunteers and the first people to come in out of the cold and other people from this community have been among those volunteers who are actually taking shifts at the cold weather shelter. So just the fact that we could do this is amazing. And I give thanks that it came together, even if it's imperfect, it's something that we're trying. And I ask you now to offer your silence. Then I ask that you will join me in prayer. First, let me lift up a prayer from all of us to Holy God. You have heard our prayers of concern and we lift up to you now our prayers of joy. For cold that is so extreme that we have to create shelter, but the people who have warm hearts and generous minds and lives and have come out to help each other. For the gift of anniversaries and remembrances, the gift of lives that have been well lived, no matter how long or short, and for the chance to have loved someone enough to weep when they are gone, but to have been changed by that love forever. For those that are among the living who change us even now, for our partners, our friends, our parents, our siblings, our children, our beloved ones, whoever they may be, we give thanks that they are part of our lives. And we give thanks for this gathering and for all the gatherings that come into your presence, O oh Holy God, including the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe, our partner church, and so many other communities. And we think today of the Bronx. And we ask that you will hear now the words that all of us lift up together, including those in Zoom who we invite to unmute so that you too can lift up your voices with us in the Lord's Prayer. As we say, our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us the best day, day, our day, our daily bread. bread. And forgive us and our sins, sins as we forgive, we forgive those who sin against, against us. Lead us not to temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power forever, and glory forever. Amen. And now we're going to sing together verses one and two of Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant? You should be able to find that in your red hymnal, page 374, or you'll find the words up on the screen. And Bob, would you be able to lead us? Okay, um, well then, I'm gonna give it a whirl as a song leader, good luck. Please rise, yes. Won't 
Please be seated. <laughs> I got some thumbs up. Okay, that's good. That's good. I never know. I, I have allergies, and so sometimes I can't hit a note, and my voice breaks. But some days it works. And uh, we're going to probably revisit this hymn as our guiding song as we go on the journey about talking about journeys together for the next several weeks. So expect to revisit this song and hear different verses and share different verses. Who's now reading the scripture for me this morning? Joan is reading scripture. Okay, Joan, if you would please come forward. Or you can actually, you can, oh, you're reading the prayer, scripture. Okay, Sue's doing scripture. We have multiple uh, people participating today, and the deacons are coordinating that. So um, Sue's going to come forward with her microphone and read the scripture, which you will find up on your screen, or you'll find it in the back of your bulletin. This is a reading from Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. The proclamation of John the Baptist, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were, being, and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Baptism of Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Thank you, Sue. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today, we consider the story of Christ's baptism and we think about how it connects with the life of a man like Martin Luther King Jr. and our own lives. And so first, I want to set the context for the biblical story. If you were in the C3 study group, you got to see at least one map and a picture of one of the two potential sites that have been designated as the probable place where Jesus was baptized. We're going to share 
maps and one image this morning before I get going with the rest of the sermon, um, just to give you, to kind of orient you. Um, so the first map that we're going to look at is a quick snapshot of the Holy Land then and now. And I call your attention to what constitutes Israel now on the right hand side of the screen, it's in green. And then particularly the right hand border, which is the Jordan River, and then the lake below. And then we're going to kind of zoom out now. We're going to look at the second map. And I see how small is Israel in the context of the Mediterranean, Northern Africa, the Middle East. What a tiny, tiny part of the world that has changed all of us because of the stories that have come down from it. We will be tracing the journeys of Christ over the next several weeks and looking at maps and seeing where he walked. We're going to take a quick look at, in the next map, at the Holy Land. And in particular, there, there are several numbered sites that were significant in his life. But I call your attention to site number five, which is above the Dead Sea and along the Jordan River. That is the site, whether it was on the East Bank or the West Bank is not known. And Israel and Jordan both uh, claim that they have the authentic side of the bank of the river in which Jesus was baptized. Uh, the Pope has acknowledged the Jordan, the Jordanian side of the River Jordan as being the baptismal site for pilgrimage purposes, but the Israeli site is actually much better known and has been used longer. Um, and then we're going to just show you one image. The final image is actually a picture of the baptismal site on the Jordanian side. And uh, we heard from Ginger and David on Friday to give us a context for the size of the river, that it's smaller than the Wildcat River that runs alongside this church, about half the size, you guys kind of guessed. And you can see in this image that the water's not clear. It's, it's, it's rather murky. But people are able to wade into it and be baptized, and many people do. And Ginger did have that experience when she was there. Is that right? It was, that, it was at that site, yeah. Um, so we're going to take down the images now, but this gives you a little bit of a context. One, for the scale of the place where Jesus was walking compared to the larger world, and also where the story that we're reading about today takes place. And as we are thinking about journeys, let us think about this story, which is the first story told about the ministry of Christ when he is an adult. Everything that happens afterward begins here. All three of the canonical gospels tell this story, and even the gospel of John tells a version of it. We read the story as it's told in Mark, but Matthew and Luke also tell this story. Everything else begins here. This is the launching of Jesus as an adult. And we focus on the word that is given to Jesus when the voice of God comes down after the dove has descended you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The reason that we are moved by these stories about Jesus, the reason that a movement even began and it was called the way and followed literally in the footsteps of Jesus and then of his followers, and they paved the way and it went further and further afield to more and more people is because he led with love, because he was 
baptized with the word beloved. And that is what he embodied and carried out into the world and offered to others, to those who were the most unseen, often those who held the least power, those who would not have been welcomed, welcomed into the homes of respectable people or have been heard in council halls or been able to lift up their voices to Rome, hoping to make change. He walked among all people. He walked too among people who were quite powerful, who had alienated themselves from their community because they held power and worked with the Roman government. He walked with many different people and he called all of them if they chose to be connected to him, beloved. And even if they couldn't be connected to him, he saw them as beloved. It is no accident that when Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed of a different world, a world that is possible here and now, he called it the beloved community. He chose the word with which Christ was baptized, the word that was on Christ's lips and the word that he embodied and offered and modeled to all of us so that it came down to embrace an entire community. You can call what we try to create together God's kingdom here on earth. You can call it the beloved community. There are so many different world, words in so many different languages and cultures. Today, we take up Martin Luther King Jr.'s word, beloved community. And I turn our attention back to the cold shelter this morning. In his day, Dr. Martin Luther King worked for people of color. He worked for people of different economic classes. Justice, enfranchisement or disenfranchisement can look different in different places. And here, one of the ways that we see a need that needs to be addressed, an essential crisis that has been met is in the basement of Nativity Lutheran Church. On Thursday, Eric from the White Horse Addiction Center asked Kim from TriCap if there would be a cold weather shelter because he was concerned for some of the clients that White Horse supports. Kim called Nathan, who's the minister of Nativity Lutheran Church and the president of the Way Station, of which I'm the co-founder and of which many of our members are supporters or even on the board of directors. And Nathan opened the basement of his church. And then we took up the challenge of figuring out what it means to run a cold weather shelter. There was no plan. This is not something that has happened before. Again, I say we didn't do it perfectly. It was messy. There have been some hiccups. But people came in. We are running at least two people on every shift. We have had good food delivered. We put up plastic. I'm using the Royal Wee because I was there doing other things, but I wasn't doing this kind of stuff. Putting up plastic tarps to create different segregated spaces within their common hall. Um, we did our best to keep everybody safe, but also to bring people in out of the cold. Just this weekend, on Martin Luther King weekend, this is what care looks like for the beloved community. Those who needed that love, those who were able to give that love, and the fact that by even doing this, we call attention to the issue, and there will be a meeting next week with the emergency response teams from multiple towns to talk about what went well, what we could do differently, and to lay plans so that this is possible again, probably in a better way than the way we did it this time, but at least it might happen again. And we won't forget. We won't let people sleep in a snowbank, which actually somebody would have been doing, and people sleep in cars, which also would have been happening. 
in sub-zero temperatures. And it's happened many times in the valley, but it didn't happen this weekend. And so here in our valley, perhaps one of the ways that we honor the life of a man who changed the face of our nation and we honor the life of the Christ who created the way and gave us the word beloved and calls each of us beloved. Perhaps this is one of the ways that we have for each other shown love and honored such lives. I remind us too that when we were able to gather socially more successfully a couple of years ago, we had our first ever Pride Month in June. And that Nativity Lutheran Church was the first of those churches who was able to very publicly welcome people of all sorts, including our LGBTQ community. But this church too is active in planning and supporting the events of Pride Month. And one of the things that we did was to create temporary tattoos that were given out on the Pride Day on a Saturday down in Schuler Park. And those tattoos said beloved. That was the word that the clergy from multiple churches who were participating in supporting Pride events chose as the word that we could offer to all people, straight, gay, anywhere on a spectrum of gender identity or sexual orientation, all are beloved. That's the word that was given to us to share, to put on our faces or our hands or our arms on our bodies to remind each other that all of us are beloved. And we put up prayer flags in front of this church that also said beloved with every kind of color behind them to make sure that our prayer flags included people of color as well as LGBTQ members of our population so that we remember there are so many of us and we are so diverse and it is our diversity that is our beauty. But that one of the things we recalled this morning at eight o'clock was that we need to be reminded often that each one of us is beautiful and beloved, a child of God. We need to hear it. We need people to tell us, to see us, even people that we see all the time and maybe appreciate, but we don't necessarily always say, thank you, thank you. People need to hear that they are worth our attention, our gratitude, that they are seen because we are the messengers of God carrying the word beloved on our lips and in the ways that we live and love among each other here and everywhere in the world. So today, as we think about how Christ began his journey, a journey that has come down to us and touches our stories, let us carry the word beloved into each other's company, into each other's lives, in the choices that we make, the words that we use, the paths that we walk. And because it is the beginning of our journey together to think about Christ's life and the way that he created, I have brought with me to the pulpit a small part of the baptismal waters that all of you helped put together last fall. And I'm going to ask that if you would like, I will come around and I will give you a blessing using these baptismal waters for your day, for the journey that you are taking through the world right now. But for those who are here in Zoom, if you wanna put your hand up to the screen, I'm going to offer you this blessing first. Brothers and sisters, May you receive the blessing of the baptismal waters that were gathered and shared into which you were baptized and that continue to bless you on the journey so that you may be that blessing and carry that blessing with you. Receive the touch of the baptismal waters 
that were gathered by your brothers and sisters sent from all over the country, west coast, east coast, rivers, ponds, and wells. Know that you too are blessed. And now I'm going to just walk around so you can probably, you might see me in the sanctuary camera um, for a moment. I'm going to mask up. I'm going to ask that everybody that receives me also mask. And I will use hand sanitizer between every blessing, I promise. Let me end our reflection on this by sharing with you the words of Jan Richardson. Beloved is where we begin. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you. Do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. That is what this journey is for. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching of sun or the fall of the night. But I can tell you that on this path, there will be help. I can tell you that on this way, there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us bearing comfort and strength, that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence whisper our name. Beloved, beloved, beloved. Brothers and sisters, each and every one of you is beloved. You are baptized into the same love that descended and embraced Christ who created our way. You are beloved. Thanks be to God. Joan Palabiak will now offer us a prayer, also written by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. The words of this prayer will also be up on your screen. God, we thank you for the inspiration of Jesus. Grant that we will love you with all our hearts, souls, and minds, and love our neighbors as we love ourselves, even our enemy neighbors. And we ask you, God, in these days of emotional tension, when the problems of the world are gigantic in extent and chaotic in detail, detail, to be with us in our going out and our coming in, in our rising up and in our lying down, in our moments of joy, in our moments of sorrow, until the day when there shall be no sunset and no dawn. Amen. Thank you, Joan. This is the time in the service when we simply remind you that we continue to be healthy and able to respond to those who need us to serve each other because of your faithful giving. And so whether you place your offering in an envelope in the pew, drop it in the plate on your way out, or go to jxncc.org and make an online donation, your contributions continue to be put to work in this part of the world and many parts of the world. And we give thanks for your faithfulness. Let us now sing together Amazing Grace. So if you're here in the sanctuary, please rise with your hymnal, turn to page 401. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. And if you're in Zoom, you'll see the words up on your screen. Bob, are you good at, can you do this one? Okay, Bob's going to be our song leader for this one.
Beloved, go in peace.
Joan Palabiak will now offer us a prayer, also written by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The words of this prayer will also be up on your screen. God, we thank you for the inspiration of Jesus. Grant that we will love you with all our hearts, souls, and minds, and love our neighbors as we love ourselves, even our enemy neighbors. And we ask you, God, in these days of emotional tension, when the problems of the world are gigantic in extent and chaotic in detail, detail to be with us in our going out and our coming in, in our rising up and in our lying down, in our moments of joy, in our moments of sorrow, until the day when there shall be no sunset and no dawn. Amen. Thank you, Joan. This is the time in the service when we simply remind you that we continue to be healthy and able to respond to those who need us to serve each other because of your faithful giving. And so whether you place your offering in an envelope in the pew, drop it in the plate on your way out, or go to jxncc.org and make an online donation, your contributions continue to be put to work in this part of the world and many parts of the world. And we give thanks for your faithfulness. Let us now sing together Amazing Grace. So if you're here in the sanctuary, please rise with your hymnal. Turn to page 401. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. And if you're in Zoom, you'll see the words up on your screen. Bob, are you good at, can you do this one? Okay, Bob's going to be our song leader for this one.
Beloved, go in peace.